So I wanted to add a little bit to what uh, Mad Cowie or Stuart Cowie did. Uh, he did a, a video on how to make an AIW for a track, but he was working on rally cross tracks where you don't have to worry about the, the pace car or the, the AI pitting and so forth. And so he, he, he only very vaguely went over uh, how to make a pit path. And uh, the way he showed you to do it doesn't actually create a very smooth transition. So I want to show you how to make a smooth transition. Because uh, you see here, this is the this is the fast path. This is the path that the AI car is going to take, and this is the the path the AIs are, are going to take going into the pits here on this oval track. Well, you know, the, there's a, a a gap here, and so when the, the AI cars get here, they're going to suddenly turn turn right, and that, that creates an, uh, not a very smooth transition. All you have to do is you're showing the fast path here is grab the last, or I should say, the first of your pit path, and just grab a few after that. Let's grab all the way up to about here, and then normalize curve. Now you see it, now it merges with the fast path, so now the AI cars will smoothly turn and uh, join the pit path. Now unselect, and go to show hide. Now hide fast path, and then show your inside path, and you also show the outside path, and also make sure that that is smooth, because this is the path that the pace car will take when it pulls off. So again, we have a nice a smooth transition here. So that's how you want to, to do that. And you do the same thing when the cars are coming onto the pits to make a, so the pace car and the AI cars can come out, off the pits and join the track perfectly uh, smoothly without any sudden wiggles or sudden brake checks and things like you see at so many tracks. Uh, that's all you have to do. It's not documented. Uh, they don't mention this in any of the tutorials, but uh, I figured this out on my own. So uh, hopefully, uh, you can use that when you're making your tracks. Let me add to what I was talking about earlier. I was kind of in a rush when I did that last bit. Uh, some other important things that you need to know. Um, you need to make your path, your pit entry path and pit exit path, long enough for that smoothing to work. For example, here at this at this figure eight track, I, I have this is the last uh, pit waypoint, and then I have it branched way up here. That's the way most people do it. And that, in fact, that's the way Stuart actually tells you to do it in his video, is to create a branch way the heck down the racetrack in order to avoid the zigzag. Well, now that you know the smoothing method, you realize that's not the right way to do it. You want to make your pit path longer here. My pit path actually should be going way out here, and then I can smooth it in. Uh, if I try to smooth this, if you'll, you'll see what happens here. Uh, well, it's actually not too bad, but the... Uh, the path is now we're making a very sharp turn onto the uh, onto the racing path. Uh, that's actually not, not that's actually came a little better than I thought. But um, you don't want to create a long branch here because the the AI cars will accelerate really really fast, and if it's going to a corner, um, they'll they'll kind of panic and, and they have to hit the brakes at the end and it might spin out. So you, you really ideally I would want to have this branch to this waypoint here because that the distance is about the same has all the other waypoints. Uh, you want to err on the side of being long, but you don't want to be too long. If it's, yeah, if it's too long, like I say, the car will go too fast. If it's, too, if it's shorter than normal, the car will hit the brakes, and you don't, you don't want that. So err on the side of long, but don't go super long. Just, you know, just make, the, make enough waypoints. I'm, I'm going to have to redo this pit here, this pit line here, but I, normally I, I need to take it out, all the way out to here, and then it'll make a much, much uh, better smoothing. Um, Another thing to consider, is something that, that Stuart didn't mention, is after you set your grid positions, you know, the, grid, uh, the grid positions are on waypoints here, uh, after you set those, you need to exit back to the main menu. Uh, this, is, this is for the grid positions and your garage positions and your pit positions. Once you've set all those, save your waypoints, go back to the main menu, make a backup of the AIW at that point, and then re you know, come back in and then save again. But when you go come back in, that's when these waypoints are going to be created. Very important thing that happens when you do that. The first pit position is where the pace car will park when the pace car comes in. This is very important because it's not something that you can easily edit. Once it's set, you're pretty much set. Um, and there's a bug in R Factor wherein if the yellow flag comes out, 
immediately after the green, the pace car is still pulling in. If the leader comes around to the point where the pace car should start moving, but the pace car hasn't finished coming in yet, the pace car will not come back out. And it's a fatal flaw. It, it happens even at ISLA's Joesville track. This is a, just an R-factor bug in general. So you want to make sure that your first pit position is early enough that the pace car will hit it before the leader can come around and, make, and trigger the pace car coming out again. Uh, there's also a value in the AIW uh, you can find called safety car release dist, uh, which you can edit, which will determine when the safety car starts moving. It, it's basically a range along the lap of how far along the leader is going to be before the pace car starts moving. So if your pace car is coming out too soon and you have to, to rush to catch it, then uh, you can increase those numbers, make them a little closer to one. And don't make them too close, or otherwise it won't work at all. And then the pace car will come out later. If, if, if on the other hand, you have a, a pace car that's coming out too late, and you're, you know, you're, you're having to hit the brakes or even wait for the pace car to pass you, then you can make a lower number there so the pace car will come out sooner. Uh, that's another undocumented feature that I find very useful. Uh, let's talk about paddocks. Uh, how to do paddocks. Now th this track doesn't really have a paddock. I just have a pit lane, which you see here, the cars come around. Um, th this is going to be my pit lane. But you do see I have another path here, so I'll, I can tell you how to do this, assuming like it's a paddock. This here is actually my pace car path. I have the pace car parked over here, and I want the pace car to drive straight. But I don't want the pace car to use the pit path, otherwise I don't want the pace car to come way over here and drive all around again. I just want to come straight out. So I made this little path, it just ends right here, and I just made this a pit extension one, and I just branched that to that waypoint. And this, of course, does not branch to anything, and that's very important. What you do is you just grab this last waypoint, and one of the options here is cap end of path segment. That means that this does not branch to anything. If you were to branch it to something, you would have the bug wherein, so how many times you've seen uh, where you're qualifying and you exit qualifying when you're done, and three or four laps are added to your total. Uh, so you, you want to make sure you don't do that. Uh, if, if this were a garage area, let's assume this were a garage area, you do the same thing, cap into path segment, but when you would make the path to begin with, uh, the only way to do it correctly, or, or to do it where it works right, uh, is to set it as pit path two, uh, but then the AI cars won't use it. So what you have to do is, once you set it to, to pit path 2, you know, and cap your end of path segment and so forth, you then need to go out into the text editor, into a text editor, load your AIW into Notepad, and replace all the, the uh, WP underscore branch ID equals in paren 2 out paren with w, WP underscore branch ID equals in paren 1 out paren. Uh, just do that by hand, and then your then your uh, paddock will work correctly. You won't have any multiple lap issues and so forth, and your cars will drive out of your out of your garage area uh, onto the racetrack. You also want to make sure you don't have sharp turns. This is why I'm having to redo this pit path here, as you see. I didn't make this turn when I made this path very even. A really sharp turn here, and what happens is the AI cars and most importantly, the pace car can't make this turn and end up hitting this truck. <laughs> and so the pace car goes around and comes back out on the racetrack. So I'm going to have to redo that and uh, make a much more rounded shape there. And uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, oh, yeah, okay, make sure you, you your, uh, your slowdown spot. Let me drive over here and show you the, the slowdown spot. So you're coming into the pit, you want to mark one of these, when you grab the waypoint just before your pit entry, the actual uh, timing line, and make mark special slowdown over here on the menu. Uh, that will make sure that the AI cars slow down to the pit speed limit and don't get a speeding penalty. And now, how do you determine where the green flag comes out? That it has to do with the teleport spot. You know, in tracks where... Uh, you hit the space bar to skip the, the pace lap, well, 
that point is the teleport spot. And you know how this kind of guesswork involves with doing this. You have to figure out there's a three, two, one player control, another couple seconds, and then the green flag comes out. Um, the AIW editor will actually give you an example, uh, at the three to one countdown here. So you just kind of have to kind of figure it out on your own. Uh, I'm going the wrong way around the racetrack here. But um, let's say for this track, for this figure eight track, the start finish line is going into turn one. So let's say this spot here, and see the option is marked to as teleport spot. I'm going to hit this, it'll move my car here. So here, three, two, one, player control, and then green flag would be right about there. So that, that's probably a good, uh, a good point to have for that, that teleport spot. And then now another thing, you'll notice that I'm driving, I'm not driving my street stock anymore, I'm driving one of the uh, default cars. That's very important. How many tracks have you been on where the fuel calculation is off? I've even seen people blame mods for that. It's not the mod's fault, it's the track's fault. You need to, to get the, uh, the, uh, the ZR or ZR and buy the, the Z-type or Z-type uh, class package. Don't buy any other upgrades, just that upgrade. And then you need to come in and you go to unsupported test options and one of the options here is simulate fuel usage. You have to use this car. Even if you're only making the mod for one particular car, you need to use this car to get your fuel calculation correct. Once you set it for this, using this car, fuel calculation will be correct no matter what mod you use to drive on the track. So very important. I've already done that so the number doesn't change. And you can also recalculate groove on save. That will all, you know, make that dark racing groove around the racetrack based on your fast path, um, which I'm not doing for this track because I'm making both a dirt and a paved version and I'm using the same AIW for both. I don't, I'm getting kind of lazy. Uh, I've made like seven or eight different layouts on this track. And uh, you want, also you want to look at your corridors. Um, when you're looking at corridors, see I'm showing corridors. For example, if, if you want to make it okay for somebody to, to, run, out, to run out wide here, say you want someone to be able to, to clip this, uh, right now, the blue areas are areas that you're not allowed to drive on, and that's good for the AI cars. Uh, but you don't if if you're getting cut track penalties. I was getting a cut track penalty on one of these layouts. Uh, instead of corridors, you can show cut track. The yellow is the area you're allowed to drive on. Now, but those lines up ahead are actually going underneath the, the road surface, so you kind of have to sometimes go under yourself to make sure that they are going out wide enough, which of those are. But if I wanted to say make this a little wider so you can cut into the the dirt a little bit. Whoops, I got the wrong one. Yeah. You can uh, grab that and then use the, the arrow keys and control to, to move them. Oh, oh well, I've got a, I've got a pit exit path here, no problem. But, uh, so move those around. You can ex extend this, the yellow line out on, onto the dirt if you, if you want to have an area that you can actually cut the track and make it okay. Um, what else, what else, I can't think of anything right now, if I think of anything else, I will add it on. Oh yeah, one other thing, if you're doing the smoothing thing that I showed at the beginning, and instead of smoothing, your line actually disappears, that means that you made your AIW elements in the wrong order, and uh, you're kind of stuck. I, at one track, I was able to fix it by making a new pit path but I've also caused that issue by making a new pit path at, a, at another track. So <laughs> it's not quite uh, reliable. You may end up having to do your AIW over from scratch. So do things in the right order, uh, which are documented at least.